Uh, you downgraded on the fifth, and that looks pretty well timed. Uh, what, what didn't you like about the move aside from the, the valuation? Yeah, no, no, thank you so very much. I mean, uh, I think uh, we got a little lucky there. This is a great company, great science, great clinical execution uh, management team um, is really uh, forward thinking. Um, and, you know, they are doing great work, literally saving the planet uh, with Pfizer and BioNTech and other companies. So I think we just got a little lucky. Uh, I think what's going on with the stock really is just the, the tension between forward expectations, um, you know, and what people think they can deliver with COVID-19 versus the pipeline. Um, you know, the company's trading more on COVID-19 expectations now. Those might be fully discounted in in the share price. And now people are starting to think, what's next? Uh, and that's just going to take a little bit of time to figure out. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your take on uh, on this booster news? Uh, and does it lead us to a, a wider discussion about boosters in the coming weeks? You know, we've been talking about boosters for close to um, a year. Uh, uh, you know, if you're a person that gets the flu vaccine, you know, you get it once a year. Uh, most viruses or there's a lot of viruses where you need, um, you know, consistent injections against that virus or vaccines. So we had been expecting boosters to be a part of the story going forward. I think, um, you know, maybe the broader public is now seeing that coming about. Um, I do think boosters will be important, uh, both for Moderna and for BioNTech and, uh, and Pfizer. Uh, and it will be part of the reason why I think they'll, uh, you know, uh, stay what I would call a, have a scarcity value attached to them. Uh, because for a couple of years, I don't think any other company will be able to have mRNA boosters like they do. Hartaj, it's Morgan. I mean, just to go back to Moderna specifically for a minute, I mean, year to date, we're talking about a gain of 275 percent. Over the past 12 months, more than 460 percent. This is a company that up until its COVID vaccine didn't have a product on the market. So we're talking about at least right now, for now, one big blockbuster product. What is going to be next for this company? How does it sustain these valuations? So, Morgan, great question. Uh, I, I just want to give a little bit of context, right? So when Alexion Pharmaceuticals uh, got their first product commercialized over the next five years, um, you know, they were up about 500 percent, um, a couple of hundred percentage points before the commercialization. Regeneron, the same thing with ILEA, about 700 percent between commercialization and, 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 uh, and reaching their peak. So, you know, Moderna got their first product commercialized in one year, essentially, because of COVID-19, the pandemic. So, you know, the numbers that you stated sound fantastic in a one-year move, but, you know, if you annualize them over five or six or seven years, it's not that out of the ordinary. They essentially did what Alexion in one year, what Alexion or Regeneron took, you know, many years to do. So uh, that, that actually does not, you know, that really does not bother me that much. I think uh, it, it, our downgrade is more so as what is next, and I do think we'll start seeing the contours of that at the R&D day on September 6th and going forward over the next two to four quarters. Yeah, well, on that note, then, Hartash, you know, you say in your note, other modalities is what you're sort of looking for progress in, in terms of their pipeline. So can you give us a sense as to what you're going to be uh, focused on on that R&D day in terms of their development uh, under other modalities that would allow, as you say, the dream to unfold? Yeah. So, you know, a modality is just a fancy way of saying other diseases. Um, so I apologize. You know, we get biotech folks get a little jargony sometimes. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and they already have a great infectious disease franchise, right, with COVID-19. They're developing a flu vaccine, COVID-19, um, you know, uh, against a virus called cytomegalovirus, which uh, um, for, for, for women of childbearing potential. Also in the rare disease area, uh, you know, there's about 650 rare diseases where protein is deficient or an enzyme is missing. It usually tends to afflict the younger uh, folks uh, who don't have long lifespans. I think those two areas are areas where in the next year we'll see a lot of movement, potentially in cancer vaccines, where also BioNTech um, also has uh, focused a lot of effort there over the last few years.